Hey guys, today we're back with another video. And today on the channel, we'll be doing a breakdown of the Primary Arms 2023 Range Day. Stay tuned for this one. <laughs> Alright guys, we're back. Once again today, we're going to be doing the breakdown of the Primary Arms 2023 Range Day in Indianapolis. Uh, we actually got to attend this year, and very special thank you to Primary Arms for actually inviting us, uh, paying our way, uh, getting us free food, free shirt, all that. I mean, we had a really, really good time. But in this video today, we're going to be breaking down what all we've seen today, good, bad, ugly, new stuff that come out, everything that we uh, could physically lay our hands on today and everything else. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we have resilient silencers. Uh, I got to shoot an AK-47 with their uh, 30 carbine uh, can on it. It felt really good, real smooth. And I also shot a 9mm can that they produced on a MP5. So it was pretty nice altogether. Um, they also had, uh, I think, rendering there with them, which uh, they're more of a muzzle device company. Uh, I looked at a few of their things, thought I would got some footage of it, but I guess I hadn't, but they was right next to it. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, or I guess you'd say gripes about this show was that there was a lot of, of double... Uh, like, uh, let's see how you would put this. Uh, people that had booths set up right next to each other, and they they technically was, and I guess they technically wouldn't the same company, or that they was, you know, uh, using just each other's products on each other's guns. So I understand, though, like, you know, with Hollow Sun, they don't make no firearms. So, like, you know, uh, next to them, they had Styre and a few other ones. But, uh, but like, on that one right there, for instance, with uh, Resilient Silencers, I, I seen the rendering, and I thought I did get some footage, but I didn't. But they, like I said, you know, they make their uh, uh, mobile devices, but I didn't get to shoot any firearms with their mobile devices on them, but they actually look pretty cool. Uh, so, second up, we had m and Industries, or M plus M Industries, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, I got to shoot their 107, finally, and I would actually reached out to them a while back uh, to review one, never did hear nothing back. So hopefully this time, if I holler back out at them again, maybe we can get one in. Uh, I know that they had some problems there for the longest time with their uh, 107, I think is what it was called. But I uh, shot this one, and it shot fine. Uh, really interesting design, kind of like a modular AK with a um, left side charging handle. So I like that about it, kind of like my Gleal. Uh But very interesting overall, and it shot pretty good. I, I liked it. Uh, so next up... We had CMC triggers. Uh, first time I've ever actually shot a CMC uh, trigger in a firearm, and we shot a uh, AR-15 shot killer. I mean, I mean, it felt killer. Uh, real good poundage. Uh, more felt more like a precision duty type of setup, uh, to where it still had a decent amount of poundage, but the break was very clean, very precise. And then we shot one uh, one of them triggers that had uh, or for the AK-9 9 millimeter AK ver uh, variant. Let me tell you something, you breathe on that thing, it would go off. I mean, that, you could probably make that thing run as bad as close as you could get to fully automatic without your eyes getting wet, to be honest with you. Uh, just a really, uh, really nice uh, gun overall, and I was really, uh, really pr impressed with their, their triggers. So hopefully we'll be getting some of them in before too long because I'd love to do a full uh, detailed review on them because uh, what, I, what little I did play with them, they was uh, really, really impressive. So uh, next up, we went to Adams Arms, uh, one of my favorite booths that we went to today. They had a uh, they had a 308 uh, set up. All their guns are piston guns as well, so real clean shooting. And uh, we shot one of their 5.56s, five, five, one of their 308s, and for it to be a piston 308, I mean it was pretty lightweight as well. Uh, shot down, got some precise shots with it. I mean everything felt great with them, and uh, that's one I want to have to start checking out here in the near future because. Uh, they just make some really, really nice firearms, and I can't wait to actually get one uh, to do a full review on. So next up, we had Holosun. Uh, Holosun had some new products there today that they had released at SHOT Show and some other stuff, and uh, got to shoot some of their rifle optics that I haven't got to shoot before, but we'll start out with the SCS DPP or the SCS 320. Uh, just depending on how you look at it, on the side of the actual optic, it had the SCS DPP for Delta Point Pro footprint. And but it's not on their website, they're calling it the SCS 320 because it sets uh, flat with a 320 uh, 
optics cut on it. And I mean, you can still use your backup sights and it is also an enclosed emitter if you can believe that or not. Uh, something that's really bad right now with enclosed emitter uh, handgun optics is that they look like a mailbox are huge. Uh, if you look at the Acro P2, they're absolutely huge. If you look at the uh, Holosun 509, I believe is what it is, they're pretty decently big, but nowhere near as big as Acro P2. Uh, but now the SES DPP was just that perfect size. I mean, you couldn't beat the size it was. And that will be one that I will be getting in the very near future just because it was flat flat uh, with your uh, irons. You can use your factory irons in it. Don't have Delta Point Pro. Uh, footprint on it so you couldn't have asked for any better than that i was just really really impressed with it we also shot the 508 on uh, the um, staccato xl we shot the scs on the actual uh, staccato p uh, which was a like i said was killer but the uh, 508 was on the uh, staccato xl and it shot amazing huge window one of the biggest windows i've ever seen for uh, handgun optic and i mean it just you picked it up and it was right there i mean it, i loved it so we sh then shot the ACMS Hollow Sun for your rifle. Uh, really enjoyed it. Really good window in it. I mean, it just uh, was a really, I guess you'd say, rugged look and design for a uh, rifle optic. And then the SCCS, which was a smaller, um, I think it was, uh, let's see here, if I'm not mistaken, I think it is actual solar only energy. It might still have a battery in it, I can't recall. But, uh, I mean, it was very small, and if you wanted to put that on, say, an MP5 or a SP5K, something like that, some, like, a smaller gun, uh, I think it would be fine. But I was really impressed with the Hall Suns I've seen today and uh, really enjoyed their booth as well. So, up next, we had this Cloud Defense. Uh, so, if you all know Cloud Defense, they actually are a uh, light uh, company. They don't really make any thing else but just handgun or uh, rifle lights and i think they're now going into the handgun market really good uh, stuff i've got a rain 2.0 myself and uh i got to play around with the rain 3.0 but we was out in broad daylights so you can't really see uh much going on in the, with it but uh, it looked pretty cool i'll say that about it uh we then went to uh anderson manufacturing and it was a really fun time they had uh, their new pistols out shot some of them they shot good felt good um shot their uh new miami vice looking gun i mean it was probably the most outlandish uh looking ar that was there today just because of the design of it but it was just interesting and hopefully we might be getting an anderson uh arms uh, upper to review uh, before too long and maybe even melt one that's what we was talking about there today but had a really good setup with their booth had pretty much every single gun that they create out today and they actually had the new dissipator as well uh which was or i guess it's an older design but you know new gun so interesting so next up we had the uh styre arms which was right next to huck works so or huck's works so we actually shot a Styre AUG with the Huxworks uh, can on it, felt killer. We also shot it with a uh, 556, with another uh, AR if I'm not mistaken. And that was the first time I've got to shoot a Huxworks uh, suppressor and probably the first time I've got to shoot a Stanag uh, AUG. But that Huxworks can really is something else. Uh, I mean, it's uh, the flow through technology. We had no blowback at all in our, in our eyes or anything like that. Just a really, really nice designed can and uh, something to look out for, guys, if you're interested in something like that. So next up, we had Troy. Troy was one of the booths that I was, you know, wanting to go to to see the accessories and stuff like that. But I did not know that they have now began making ARs. So they had uh, AR there in 14.5 pin and welded to a 16 inch and a AR there with 11.5 SBR with a uh, suppressor on the end of it. And let me tell you something, I, I think that Troy has got something going there. Uh, their 14.5, the rail on it actually had in, uh, engravings in the actual rail to help with uh, how it feels in your hand and how good of a grip you can get on it. Just really blew me away with how nice it was. And that's why I told the guy there, I was like, hey man, I don't, I didn't even know that you all made ARs. And he's like, yeah, we are now in the market for them. And I mean, I shot the 11.5, felt great. Recoil felt great on it. They, we took it apart, looked at internals on it, looked at the buffer tube uh, or the uh, buffer system they had and was really impressed with that. 
Uh, the pricing for the LE is going to be amazing. So, guys, if you're any bit uh, in law enforcement or whatever else, make sure you check one of them out because uh, – didn't actually know that as well, but the owner of Troy uh, was police, and uh, whenever he started the business, and he loves the police, and I mean, it's just, uh, it was a really, really interesting booth, and that will be one I will be attempting to get a review on, because guys, at 14.5 pin welded, uh, I was really impressed with it, and that, that says something for a, about a, I think they were saying it's going to be about a $1,400, $1,500 for the civilian market, and it was just a really, really impressive rifle, and I cannot wait to pick one up.